today we have one of our favorite guests back. Um, we've done it remotely this time, though. It is Mr. Kevin Kraft. If you've watched really any of our YouTube the past couple of years, uh, you know exactly who Kevin Kraft is. Uh, Kevin, thank you for joining from the tour van in our Columbia store. Ah, this is great. I'm glad we're finally able to do this. I know it's been uh, it's we've been kind of been a work in progress. We've sort of been trying to dial in some of the tech stuff and make it work. And now you look pretty comfy over there in the in the tour van. It looks it looks great. Yeah, I don't get to use these chairs very often. These are <laughs> typically for our for our guests. But uh, yeah. yeah, for this for this occasion, uh, I'm I'm pretty cozy. Of course, yeah. Are you able to play golf over there? I imagine it's, the courses are have been open and are open right now. Or is it? Because I all oh, I know yeah. is in no, Minnesota, we, it's been snowing and. There was a time open in February, and now we're back kind of waiting for courses to open again. What's it like over there? So aside from raining a lot, uh, and it's been raining pretty much every Wednesday when I'm off, so I haven't played any golf. Uh, it's places, you know, everybody's open, and and golf is kind of in full swing. As a matter of fact, our, uh, everybody's now able to register their handicaps. So oh, that, yep. that period of winter time where, where where nobody can plug in their scores is now over. So yeah, uh, it's it's a free for all. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of where it is too. Our posting season has officially begun here. So uh, mm. those those rounds I I did not um, get to post earlier this spring. Uh, I get to maybe add those to the calendar. So um, nice. Let's let's talk about about golf, uh, pro golf, and uh, what's going on there. Hey, um, like- yeah, it's it's. Well, what have, what have you noticed? Uh, a couple of things I had just written down was Scotty Scheffler's dominance um, and also Nelly Korda going back to back to back in three starts in a row winning. Um, what have you kind of taken away from the pro golf uh, landscape the last few weeks? So, you know, obviously the, the pro golf landscape these days is is interesting and there's yeah. there's a, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of discussion going on about the pro golf landscape. So, yeah. uh, I have some, I have some opinions as I typically <laughs> sure. do on things. Um, you know, those guys who are just clamoring for somebody to just jump up and lead and be that guy that's, you know, on top week after week after week, guess what? Scotty Scheffler your man. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great players out there and seeing things like, Peter Malnati winning two weeks ago and um, Steven Yeager winning this week. You know, personally, I see that as, as positives for the tour yeah. uh, because we need, we need guys to be able to step up. You can't just simply have the same guy mm-hmm. win over and over and over again. Are there guys that we would like to see play better? Uh, JT? Yes, um, there <laughs> certainly are. You know, it'd be great if JT would would get his stuff together and, and start playing a little better. And Jordan Spieth and Xander Shoffley, you know, become more of the winner rather than that contender. And I know he's won seven times, but uh, it doesn't feel like it. it feels like he always finishes second. And Cam Young, I mean, if he could quit finishing second all the time, would probably be really mm-hmm. cool, too. So there's a lot of guys out there that are really interesting stories and can certainly build the golf landscape up a lot for us. But I like seeing some of these guys who's, you know, they've been on the outskirts and here they are, they're, they're rising up. I mean, Steven Yeager is going to feel really good knowing that he took down Scotty Scheffler. Right. Even yeah, that's Scotty Scheffler kind of took down Scotty Scheffler. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the cool thing about like you're mentioning the Malnati's and the Jaegers. Like those are the guys that have had to sort of build a slow kind of continual rise up the tour ranks, you know, from mini tours yep. to the web.com or corn Ferry, I guess now it is. Um, and then now to the PJ tour and finally breaking through for, you know, I guess in Malnati's case, it was a first win in, in several, several years where he'd been kind of yeah. just a fringe tour player. And then in Jaeger's case, you know, he breaks through for his first career win. Um, it's yeah. kind of, there, there's probably a segment of golf fans that love and, you know, really want those stories every week. And there's maybe mm-hmm. a more, uh, for lack of a better term, a more casual fan that does want to see the Scotty Scheffler dominance every week, or um, maybe these bigger names up on the leaderboard that with the way some of the, 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 the tour schedules laid out now, you kind of get these, you know, a few really big events throughout the year, majors and some of the other, you know, quote unquote signature events. And then you get your, um, you know, maybe I don't want to say watered down tour events, but some of the events that don't have as 
um, much of a big name field. And typically those are the events that kind of yield those cool stories of guys that sure. are finally breaking through. So we're kind of getting a little bit of both this year because there's been a lot of long shot winners on tour this year. Yeah, there certainly have. And I mean, look, I, the idea of having Scotty Scheffler just exceeding and exceeding and succeeding and succeeding all the time is very cool because uh, if you remember how it was when Tiger Woods was ruling the world, right. um, you know, that was really cool to see. And we all know that Scotty's best ball striker on the, uh, on the planet right now. And it, he's so fun to watch. So, and he's so easy to root for. Like he seems like such a good down to earth mm-hmm. guy, really laid back, uh, got some passion though. Right. I I'm somebody that likes to see that passion. Uh, maybe not quite as much passion as we saw from, uh, from toasty this week. Well, that guy gets pumped up. Yeah. Um, but maybe that's good too. I don't know. It's uh, we'll have to see. Haven't seen much of him, so it was kind of the first time I'd I'd seen him uh, yeah. in action. So uh, I guess the jury's out on that one. But uh, having that dominant player or a group of dominant players, great for the game. Not having those guys also in a way great for the game. So I don't think that I don't think it's all doom and gloom in the, in the world of professional golf. And I know there are certainly some issues out there, but the product, you know, can it be improved? Yes. And a lot of that falls on broadcasting and some of it falls on the tour to, to figure some things out. But, you know, sure. uh, I'm enjoying watching professional golf, uh, whether it's PGA tour champions tour or ladies tour. Uh, it's all, it's all been really good. Yeah. It and, really has, you know, Quick segue, Nelly Corda is amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I was going to mention that because winning, the, the, it seemed like obviously Scotty got all this attention for going for the three peat and coming up really, what, one five foot, six foot putt short uh, of having a playoff for it anyway. Then Nelly's out here shooting 65 on Sunday to kind of reclaim the lead and, and then eventually win for a third straight start. Um, I think she's kind of over the maybe the, the injury that she was sort of dealing with in 2023. I think that's a thing of the past now. Yeah, and not only that, but also the sort of this idea of she's not been maybe necessarily that dominant in sort of the more challenging events when weather kind of creeps in or, Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And, I mean, the last two wins, she's had all kinds of stuff to deal with and and has come out, you know, smelling like a rose. So, yeah. if that's the case, if if she wasn't as good being maybe the mutter, right, when the weather gets a little iffy uh, and, and she's doing this, doing this now, uh, look out. I mean, she could just totally dominate. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's definitely what I'm looking for uh, to seeing from her in the, yeah. you know, the major season for the LPGA uh, circuit. So um, quickly before we get to our what's in the bag uh, kind of segment, right, because I think what. I don't know if uh, viewers have gotten to this point yet in their uh, relationship, if you will, with Kevin Kraft. But uh, one of my favorite things with Kevin Kraft is the what's in the bag and how frequently it changes. Um, and so that's going to be really fun to get to. But uh, quickly, I wanted to get a couple of picks uh, from you uh, for Augusta. Uh, obviously, the first major of the year, our favorite event or one of our favorite events of the year. Um, you got maybe one or two guys that you're really looking for uh, maybe to, to take the, take the green jacket. <sighs> I mean, look, I'm going to go super conventional here. I'm going to yeah. go Scotty Scheffler. I'm going to go John Rahm. I'm going to okay. go Brooks Kepka. Yep. Um, I just don't have enough faith in Rory McIlroy right now to put him that on was that my, list. That was and, my question is what we think about Rory because he's, you know, the, the history I, is there at I Augusta. He can, plays well, loves to finish yeah. top five there, but he can't quite, yeah. uh, you know, put the green jacket on. I hope. I hope I can eat my words because I would I would love to see Rory finish off his yeah. his Grand Slam, but I just don't feel like I don't know. You know, he was he was being pulled in so many directions when he was you know on the tour board, and now he's off the tour board. And I really expected this sort of like you know hyper intense focus on the golf and 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 getting his game back to where you know he, he 
didn't have that outside distraction and everything was going to be, was just going to be better. And all he's done since then is make bogeys, doubles, triples, and quads and, and tons of birdies, right? Yeah. Uh, Rory's always going to make tons of birdies, but just so many mistakes. And it's whether it's just a little loose here or there or missing some putts or, you know, golf's hard, right? We, we all know golf's hard. So, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to slam him for, you know, not making every putt, not hitting every fairway, but, you know, we've kind of, you know, we've become accustomed to the way he typically played. And I just don't feel like he's typically playing, yeah. you know, that way right now. So. Right. I think uh, it's, I, if I were to guess the blueprint for Rory this week, or at, excuse me, at Augusta is going to be um, kind of lurk around for a while. He's going to be not quite at, at the top flight of contenders, but he'll be sort of, hovering right behind them, and then he'll charge up Sunday with a 66 or something to finish strong at, like, T4. That seems to be the blueprint for Rory um, at, at Augusta. It seems like he's done that frequently. So um, I'm hoping and I'm wrong, be though. exciting, but I'd, I'd love to see him just put up a real good one either Thursday or Friday, be hovering near the top, put up a solid day on Saturday so that he's right in the mix Mm -hmm. You know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, somewhere right in there, only a couple shots back and then and then just polish it off with a really good performance on Sunday. Um, that might be the one thing that just then propels him straight, you know, back into the, the stratosphere where where yep. he used to live. Right. Yep. Um, one more name I'm going to throw out there that maybe isn't totally on the, the favorites list, if you will, is Will Zalatoris. And I say that because he's had a couple really mm. good finishes at Augusta and now he's working with that lab uh, broomstick putter. Um, and it seems like it he better. may have, you know, solved some of the putting issues. So if that's the case and he can putt well, he typically tends to putt well at the big events. So that's a sort of a dark horse name. I'm going to throw, throw into the mix there, but I like the other three that you, that you threw out there as well. I'm, I've been a Brooks guy. And then obviously Scotty and Rom are kind of the, the, uh, the juggernauts of the field as well. Yeah. I mean, uh, if I've got to pick a dark horse, Let's go with, uh, who do we got? Uh, let's go with, with Auberg. Oh, okay. Or I like that. Yeah. A, a bear. Oh, bear. So the, I don't know. It's changed think, a few times. I, don't I know how think to it at this point. it's, you're talking about Ludwig. I, okay. So the, I've yes. heard many different pronunciations and I don't think, I don't <laughs> think every broadcast has gotten it hundred percent. Right. Um, <laughs> no, and then we're probably not getting it right either. I've heard. No, Oberg. Oberg. Yeah, it's the Swedish, uh, the younger kid who has. I think he's like the best driver of the golf ball in the world right now. Um, he keeps hitting it fairways and maybe, he hits it three thirty. You know, that can help at Augusta. Yes, uh, it definitely can help at Augusta. Maybe what we should do is just call him Ludwig. He'll be like yeah. Madonna. You do know <laughs> yeah. who Madonna is, right? I do. I do. I do. You got me okay, on that good. one. All right. I have to I, ask. I, can, I always have to ask. Yeah, yeah. You. That's a fair question given my history. <laughs> But <laughs> so, all right. So we've got we've got some picks to watch for. We got Scotty. We got yes. Rom. We got Brooks. We'll watch for Rory. Uh, we'll watch for Zalatoris and maybe Ludwig Olbear. I will call. It, we'll go with that. I like it. Uh, I yeah. Like so it. good. All right. Let's get into uh, the segment I've been looking forward to all day long. Uh, it is what's in the bag. And uh, so Kevin, I think we're we're just gonna have you go through driver. And we'll kind of go through each club category in your bag and sort of, you know, what might be filling the gaps. If I remember correctly, last year, so we'll kind of go from last year's what's in the bag. You had you had the Aerojet driver, right? Um, then it was the you went down and actually put a burner mini driver in the bag, and then Correct. you've got your your King Tech two and four hybrid. You've got or had your combo of Cobra irons. I think it was a Forge Tech five, six seven. It was the CB. And the MB yep. was uh, eight nine pitch, um, and gap, and gap. Okay, I'm trying. To, I actually don't remember what the wedges were. And then of course the putter was like four different things. So uh, <laughs> let's, four. Uh, That's being generous. Okay, <laughs> seven eight nine. I don't know. Uh, so well, maybe we'll save putter for the end because that seems like it might take a little bit to get through. So let's go. With, let's start <laughs> How at the top much time of driver. Do we have for this? Yeah. What 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 we got in the, in the bag for driver right now? Twenty twenty four. Okay, in my bag right now, I have two drivers. That's perfect. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I am currently messing around with 
both the Dark Speed X and the Dark Speed LS. And I have okay. not yet made a firm decision on which one's going to get the nod. Um, I think I have pretty well made the call on what shaft I'm going to be using. I do have an Autoflex SF505 double X in, in there, and it just feels marvelous. So I don't think the shaft's going to change uh, from that. Uh, I do have a 50 gram stiff flex Ventus Blue, uh, which also feels very, very good. Uh, not quite as good as the Autoflex does to me, though. I get all the feels in that transition. Oh, yeah. golly, I just love it. So um, I had to trade away every last thing that I had in order to get this Autoflex. So I'm planning <laughs> to put it to good use. There you um, go. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know. that It's going to be nine degrees, which is amazing to be at nine degrees when two years ago I was at five and a half, but the changes I've made in my golf swing make it a whole lot easier to, to play a, a, a round of golf with a, with a nine degree driver. Five and a half was tough, man. Trying to get that thing to square up. You had to work pretty hard. Mm -hmm. So nine degrees is where I'm going to be this year, I think. And uh, okay. we'll see. Uh, it's it's going to be a dark speed. Don't know which one, but uh, sure. you know, it's one of those two. Okay. Well, uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not terribly surprised to see Cobra at, on, in the driver's spot. I know you like your Cobra drivers, no, um, but yeah. now let's. I gotta ask about this burner mini, um, and I gotta, you know, because you played it last year. You kind of know you kind of love to have sort of a driver replacement. You call it in the bag. Yes. Are you sticking with that this year? Yes, hundred percent. That is, that is not going anywhere, unless of course the 2.0 version, which. We saw a spy pics of yesterday is actually better, though I can't imagine it's any better than the one I've got right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the well, the the burner mini is it's it's a it's a kind of unique club. Uh, players like yourself are like the prime candidate for it, and so it's not a surprise to me to see that in your bag. But golfers, if you're if I guess if anybody's curious about it, first of all, go check it out or maybe test it in a fitting. But it's like. Well, I don't know what, what what's your stated loft on yours and how do you play it loft wise? So mine is eleven and a half. I have it I have it set at eleven and a half. I have it set on standard. Okay. Um, I have it on the I think I have it on the upright setting because I want to make sure that this thing turns over. Um, and it is. It's I mean it's a fairly specialized golf club, but for somebody with the mental issues that I've got, it's fantastic. Um, and I tee it up about this high and just let it go. There you go. Fantastic. There you go. Yeah. There's, certain, there's a sense of confidence that you can have just knowing you can swing away at that thing um, and it's going to give you the results. So kudos to you. You got yeah. that, uh, that, that burner mini spot. I remember we were testing it out here in Minnesota, actually. And it, I, I, I could, I remember the look on your face oh. when you were hitting that the first yeah. few times and yeah. you loved it. So, um, all right. Now this is another kind of the part of the bag where I feel like there won't be a change, but I could be wrong. Cause you've spoken very, very highly of the Cobra King tech hybrids. Um, and you've got two of them or had two of them, two and four hybrid. Are those still in the bag? So, yes, they are. But there is a there's an asterisk. And that okay. asterisk is I have actually added a, a titanium Cobra three wood into the mix. Oh, OK. Um, I have found that going from driver to mini driver and then to two hybrid, there can be a bit of a there can be oh, a bit sure. of a gap there. So, the the key is going to be determining, you know, tournament tournament week, whether the par fives are going to be easy reaches or whether they're going to be a little longer reach. And if I can get there, do I need another ten to fifteen yards of carry to be able to to get there? So, if which the is par what you would get with longer, the dark speed titanium, right? That's with the three wood, yes. Yeah. So okay. if the if the if the par fives are longer, I will probably put the three wood in the bag and drop the two hybrid out. But if the par fives aren't as long and I feel like uh, that that two hybrid will will cover, then I'll just keep that in there. And okay. I'm honestly, I, I've only played a couple rounds with the with the three wood, but it's been fantastic. And so right. I'm really comfortable with it and I can go either way. I just really going to just be determined by the length of the par fives. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. That, and that seems like it's not, it's a very common thing for especially players of your caliber to have sort of a, um, 
but she had this kind of this section of the bag to have sort of two options at one spot based on conditions yeah. and golf course. So um, that two hybrid Technically, versus three. I have three. three. Kind of I yours. actually have a. Yeah, I also have a. I I keep a Strix on uh, driving iron number two in the trunk too, just okay. in case. So, no, but yeah. there you go. Got you got the whole. Yeah, you got a whole cycle options there, and then the four hybrid stays. Good. Four hybrid stays. Okay, so good. Good professionals always prepared. Yeah, right. Uh, maybe that says something about me. Um, so now into the irons. Are we uh-huh. still in the Cobra, like, I guess, combo set there? No changes. No changes. Wow. Look mm. at you. <laughs> no changes. Okay. So so let's reviewing again. Cobra, it's the Forge Tech 5 iron. Forge Tech 5 iron. And then the, the 6 and 7 are the CB. And seven. Yep. And then the yep. uh, muscle back 8, 9 pitch gap. Okay. Wow. No more discussion there yep. needed. I, the irons are still the same. Nope. How about it? Yeah. All right. Wedge time. Uh, well, what lofts are you playing and what model? Okay. So I did go through three sets of wedges last year, and it wasn't because I wore anything out. Uh, one thing I don't <laughs> do a lot of is practice, so uh, no, no chance I'm going to wear a wedge out. Uh, I am currently in a pair of tailor-made milled grind four wedges. Okay. I have a 54 at standard bounce uh, bent down to 53, and I just picked up a 56 low bounce that I bent up to 58 to okay. cover the loft and distance that I want. I've been playing a 60 and I just feel like I need a little bit more out of that club out of the fairway to get and just to be able to cover. I, I really need 95 yards out of it. Okay. 90, 90 to 95 is a, is a tough number for me to hit with my sand wedge. It's a, it's just a smooth hundred yard club. And if I try to go smoother, there can be some issues fatting issues which i don't want to uh to yeah. deal with so uh i get to make a little more aggressive move with the 58 and i can cover that yardage better and uh so the low bounce has a ton of relief it's got a killed leading edge lots of relief across the back bent up to 58 it gets me to 10 degrees of bounce and that's where i'm happy all right all right all right that's uh i think i remember faintly now that you brought it up the that you had at the end of last year milled grind four so they must have in that yep. sense maybe stayed from okay so yeah okay so we're getting things dialed in here so it's in, in a sense your irons and wedges haven't changed in 2024 which is uh further For, you know progress at least not at least not in the in the brand and and style. I will say I have a set of Vokies on order though. Okay. Okay. So gonna do some testing with those, I imagine, um, and maybe put them in the bag, right? So I love wedges. Yeah, I, I know you it. do. I love wedges. Wedges. Okay. And so yeah. Well, speaking of putters, um, <laughs> let's see how this conversation goes. We've got the putter for Mr. Kevin Kraft. Uh, well, how many putters are we talking about right now? Um, I'm technically only talking about one putter right now oh so we have one as of right now in the bag that you're you kind of mm-hmm. sticking with right now what is that so it's been in the bag since september i'm not going to say that i've played that much golf since september since september but i've played some golf uh i have a odyssey trihot 5k number seven. Oh, okay so that's kind of the uh sort of the it's got the kind of winged look with behind the, yeah. the heel and toe the that kind of classic number it. seven. Yeah. The, the classic number yep. seven look. Okay. Um, what has, uh, what has made that one stay in the bag? I, so long. And I say so long, I mean, since September, but also there hasn't been a ton of golf to be played since right. then. So technically that's fair. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've spent a lot of time with David Coe and James park in on Quintic. And okay. we've put it through multiple trials and it just comes out consistently as the most efficient and consistent putter that I have brought to these guys. Okay. There you go. That's all you need so to be said. As long as you're, you're fitting yourself me, for it and it works. Yeah. It's me attempting to be smart, which is, it is not easy. 
me being yeah. smart is not easy. <laughs> I mean, I have to work pretty hard to to not, you know, want to kick myself in the head. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so that's that's pretty good though. So we've got we've got the dark speed driver TBD, which model exactly X or LS. Yeah. The burner mini stays um, added as an option. The dark speed titanium three wood, depending on course conditions with the King Tech hybrids. Irons have stayed the same. And then uh, milled grind four wedges and an Odyssey, uh, the Tri Hot 7, 5K7. 5K, yep. There we go. Uh, okay. That seems like if you were to go back and look at Kevin's What's in the Bag, say beginning of 2023, I think we filmed one. You should check that out and just see how different it is. I have a feeling it's going to be pretty different. Yeah. So, all right. I wanted to also update you with mine. Because um, I actually changed everything in my bag since last year, except for one club, Ping G425 LST Three Wood is staying in the bag. Um, I have done a lot of testing with drivers um, since you know the new stuffs come out. I was down at uh -huh. Ping to test the 10K. I've also you know looked at the AI Smoke Triple Diamond, QI 10 LS, Dark Speed, um, you name it. And uh, I kind of came to a realization in my brain. After I'd played the Sim 2 for the last three years, um, you know, maybe I just need more forgiveness. And I'm not good enough to just hit a like a low spin driver that, and the Sim 2 isn't the most forgiving out there. And as someone who frequently misses sort of towards the toe, um, a, a 10K can can help me, and it did help me a lot when I was testing. So that is what I went with um, in the driver G430 Max 10K. Uh, are you? What have you seen from that this year? And am I making a, a bad decision or a good decision with that? Uh, I think you're making a great decision. <laughs> um, I totally disagree that you're not good enough to hit a low spinning driver, but um, anybody can hit a, a 10K. I mean, that thing is, it's phenomenal. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's so stable. Spin rates are great. Uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful golf club. It's a wonderful mm. golf club. I like and to hear I think that. You will probably see. I think you will probably see improved driving stats because yeah. of the switch. I think so because I, if you have played golf with me, I tend to swing driver pretty hard. What happens is I frequently miss off the toe, kind of get that sort of diver out of the sky that turns left. Um, and I just saw with the 10K that miss in particular was much better, um, and so it's kind of a play on me protecting against those misses and, and ideally putting myself in a better spot. So, um, when I do miss, so that's the driver. Uh, Thanks. and then I mentioned the G 425. Yeah. And then the G 425 LST three wood. I don't know if that'll leave my bag for a decade. That thing's awesome. Um, and then I added a ping. I crossover three iron. Um, I, okay. that might be, might be up there with my three wood as the, my favorite club. Like those two together are, are a great partnership in the bag. Um, good so, fairway finders. Yes. Yes. I can kind of swing at that three iron and it's just sort of, it's got a nice, uh, probably 10 yard draw about two fifty. Um, no, no problemo there with, with, with that one. Nice. And then, uh, so now this is the irons. I'm going to leave the irons as a little bit of a, uh, not set in stone yet. I'm still kind of testing okay. out the, uh, Handmade sticks LB ones, so Larry Bobka's designed gotcha. irons, the cool. blades. Um, and that's kind of why I'm sort of testing them out. Is that they are blades, and they are not the most forgiving irons. They are actually probably the least forgiving irons I've ever played, um, to be frank. But uh, feels great, um, and I I think loft purposes as well. Larry has suggested that I get weaker lofted irons because of all the speed I have, and um, that part has been good in the sense that the ball is not going super far when I say pull it uh -huh. versus other irons I've had. So um, still TBD for sure to solidify that. But um, now into the wedges, you said you me you mentioned SM10s that you have coming. I got some SM10s as well, and I do have them in the nice. bag at 52, 56, and 60 degrees. Um, looking forward to getting more experience with those. And then lastly, yeah. the putter. This is maybe the thing I'm most excited about. Um, I went with the the hip trend, if you will, on Ooh. tour. The Odyssey AI-1 Cruiser Jailbird. 
Um, so it's oh. the one that, you know, Wyndham Clark's playing, that sort of long 36. Well, I, get, I have mine at 39 inches, kind of the counterbalanced uh, design. Uh, have you seen a lot of that or maybe interest in that, Kevin, in, in fittings? So, honestly, we've been a little bit on a, in a holding pattern here because we just had our, our putting green redone. Mm. And yeah, we're that's right. not doing a ton of putting fittings right now just based on the fact that our – we're not really particularly level, so we're oh, we're yeah. doing some, but we're not like pumping them out. So yeah. there's been some interest. People are, you know, we have a couple demos back there. People are picking them up. We we talk about them. Uh, I almost thought you were gonna say lab putter. No, I not quite. You, now we had uh, Sam Han, the CEO of Lab, on for YouTube Live ah. a week or two and a half or two weeks ago, um, and nice. he put me on the spot during that and kind of was like. Uh, what part are you playing this year? And I did not say that exactly. I did not say I was playing a lab because I'm not, but I also didn't totally tell him I was playing. I hinted that I was teasing the the uh, the jailbird, but um, he kind of he tried to persuade me to to get into that. So there's some science behind it for sure. Um, are, oh, I mean, there is. Are, are people looking into those ones, like the broomstick especially, or not really? Labs getting a lot of lot of interest. Yeah, I mean, we we had Sam Hahn, the lab CEO, on a YouTube live here recently, and he kind of put me on the spot asking if I was what pl- putter I was playing and if I would play a lab. And I I did not say yes, I'm playing a lab because that would be a lie. Uh, but I did not really commit to one or the other. But um, there, it seems like yeah. there's some technology behind that. Have you kind of gotten some interest from from golfers on that one, especially the broomstick? Yeah, there's. Yeah, there's the the broomstick's definitely gotten gotten some interest. I mean, you look at what it's done with with Will Zalatoris and um, you know a couple of the other guys out there. Um, mm-hmm. You know that they putt better this way. I mean, Will Zalatoris putting stroke still doesn't look magnificent, but it looks a heck of a lot better than it did when he was putting with a short putter. Yeah. Um, so you know, Adam Scott's been using it for quite a while, and yeah. uh, so you know I think I think there's a lot to it. Mm-hmm. the look is can be an issue right uh for yeah. somebody that's really aesthetically oriented like i am um i'm interested in the link the blade oh yeah uh, i if if i'm gonna go that route it's gonna have to be the it's gonna have to be the link but i i like the i like the science behind it i've done a lot of I've done a lot of poking around so uh stay tuned you never know Mm, yeah, yeah, you're. With it's me. true. You really never know with with Kevin and what uh, what putter is yeah. going to be in the bag next. So, um, but yeah, the the Jailbird to me, so stable, and so I'm going to try it out this year. My brother got the kind of one of the limited edition ones last summer and uh, loved cool. it. So that was kind of the endorsement nice. that I needed. Uh, so all right, kind of the last segment here, Kevin. I I found um, three questions on YouTube. Uh, in our comments that um, I think would be great for you to answer. One is very directly aimed at you, um, and in a good way. Uh, it'll be a fun one for okay. you to answer. So um, we'll start with there. I got three of them. This first one is from uh, the username, I believe, is at Dr. Grizz. It's uh, D-R-G-R-Z-Z. So talking about your the shirt that you had in a recent video, it's kind of that, that pinkish, oh. flowerish one. So it's, oh, okay. said now. Now that is a nice shirt. What's your go-to island drink? I like a Miami Vice to cool down and relax. <laughs> um, wow, island drink. I I haven't been I haven't spent any time on any islands. <laughs> um, Neither have I. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I am primarily a beer and gin drinker. So, uh, I'm pretty much gin and tonic everywhere I go, unless I'm drinking IPAs. So, yeah. um, yeah, I don't, I'm, I, I don't know. I need to get myself to an Island and start to experience some Island beverages. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm maybe all about this, the beverages. So yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Kevin is about the beverages. <laughs> um, if you guys have suggestions for Kevin for an Island beverage, maybe drop them in the comments Please. of this particular video. S- send them on. I will, I yes. will, I will give anything a shot. Yes, except sours. I don't like sours. I'm not drinking okay. sours. I thought no I would sours. like sours. I don't like sours. No, nope, <laughs> don't like sours. <laughs> all right, big takeaway from this video: no sours for Kevin. Uh, all right, now back to golf. So okay. this one's from at Joe Lane two eight four five. How would you rank forgiveness and ball speed ret- retention across the face? 
for the following irons. He's got four irons here. So trying to kind of rank forgiveness across the face on these four. Ping I-530, TaylorMade P790, Titleist T200, and Mizuno Pro 245. So all kind of in that player's distance category. Um, You know, ball speed on all of those is really good. I don't think there's anything that's in my recollection in all their fittings that necessarily jumped out, you know, one being particularly superior over the, over the next, um, two, four, five is a little bit, uh, you did say two, four, five, not two, four, yep, three, yep. right? Yep. Two, four, okay. five. Um, yeah. Yeah. They're all, they're all very fast faces and any one of them is capable of winning any battle. The, issue can oftentimes come down to spin and so if i'm having any challenges lately it's finding the right spins off you know, the the i530 i530 is very very fast maybe the mm-hmm. fastest face of of those four but i have had some some challenges getting the spin right with uh with some of the players yeah so you know, if, if we're not getting that spin up, you know, we got to have more trajectory so we get the good landing angle. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, combination wise in there, I almost have to give the nod to the P790. I've, I've had hmm. a lot of really good fittings with P790 from first generation on, and it doesn't seem to be a club that tends to spin consistently too little. So I know this is maybe not the direct answer to the to the question, but uh, from a fitting standpoint, this is kind of these are the things that I have to look at. So yeah, um, I had a I had a set of two hundreds the other day. It was really really good. Uh, guys spun them really nicely. No issues there. Two four five depends on the individual. Uh, my only concern is with the ping. Uh, I haven't had anybody that's really produced good good spin numbers with it yet uh it'll probably happen um but it's going to be individual you know yeah what do we always say uh results may vary yep yep i was just gonna yeah, that's kind of the, the kevin Kraft but, slogan during the fitting conversations is individual yeah, results may vary. yeah in terms of of you know speed retention you know these faces are you know if you're coming from a, a game improvement club and looking to not lose lose distance in the process while getting more workability and 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 maybe some better numbers um i don't think you can go wrong with any of them honestly but you gotta get the you gotta get that club that get the head shaft combination that's producing the right spin and landing angle though yeah yeah i'm sure that's kind of this category especially is where that's really important um, the clubs yes. are kind of in that tweener of getting the ball with loft in the air versus kind of doing it with sort of the um, the technology in there and sort of the way that the club is, is built. So, yep. um, all right, last one here. This is from Riley um, on YouTube asking between the 243, assuming Mizuno Pro 243 and the Blueprint S, do you notice a significant forgiveness yeah. difference, especially in longer irons? I'm guessing the 243 is more forgiving by a wide margin, he says. Um, that's an interesting one because really with, in our, you know, in our fitting base, we're using almost exclusively seven irons, uh, unless somebody specifically is asking for, for, to see the longer irons. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think there's a huge amount of difference in the forgiveness between the, between the, the blueprint S and the two, four, three, Either of those are irons that I would be more than happy to use were I to somehow decide to, to dump what I've got in now. Um, I love both those irons very much. Um, I don't know. I think, yeah, I, I'm only going to go to five iron in either of them anyway. And maybe not right. even that. I might even throw throw something a little more forgiving in the five iron. Um, neither one's going to be super forgiving in, in, say, a four iron. Right, right, uh, yeah. They're not built to be forgiving at that part of the bag. They're really not. They're really not. They're, they're both player cavity irons. So um, maybe a little nod to the to the to the Mizuno, just a just a tiny little nod. Yeah. But I don't think we're splitting hairs here on this one. Yeah. I don't think it's, we're. I you don't, don't think, think it's a significant say, oh, yeah, difference. Is, 
right that that no, riley was really suggesting don't. that it was okay that's interesting yeah, because it it's... seems like the mizuno the cavity iron like the 223 and the 243 sort of have a little bit extra juice to them that maybe prior yeah. cavity irons from mizuno in that category didn't it seems like they're kind of adding yeah. a little bit more like a little more sauce in there right for some ball speed yeah, for sure. It's a very fast face and it's one of those, you know, it's, I don't look at it as a player distance iron, but it oftentimes performs like a player distance iron right. where if you got somebody that's, you know, making a, a, that slightly bigger step coming from a, a game improvement club to more of a player's cavity uh, and they're looking to not lose ball speed or, or not lose too much distance in, in the process, that two, four, three is, got to be in the mix because it's it's mm -hmm. it really does produce good numbers but that said the, the the blueprint s also has been very fast too so mm -hmm. it, they're they're both great golf clubs yeah um, i mean it is a great time to get fit for an iron set if you're in that player's cavity category there's a really a bunch of really good options out there titleist t-series from last yeah. year um and then you have the tailor-made p7 series from a couple for all from beginning of yep. 2023 then of course Callaway had theirs last year. You've got uh, Mizuno with the their their new Pro Series, and then obviously Ping now with the Blueprints. There's so much out there. So, um, yeah, I think Cobra so. What King we're gonna tour. do it in the Cobra King Tour? I, I would be. Gosh, I, I it's really not nice of me to to omit that with Mr. Kevin Kraft putting it in the bag. We talked about it already, though, right? So uh, we didn't talk about the King Tour. We talked about the the Forge Tech CB right. and MB. The CB, okay. Yeah. Yeah, geez. Yeah. yeah. The King Tour you played before though. Well, the the previous generation of it, right? Yeah, I played the Mim Tour for yeah. two and a half years. Yeah. Okay. So uh what what I'm what we're getting to here is that Kevin Kraft is the person to go get fit with for your irons. Um, because he's played a lot of the models and if he hasn't played them, he has hit them a ton in the bay and knows everything about them. Right. That's fair. Yeah. Um uh, all right, we're gonna wrap it there because, um, well, cool. we've had a little bit of technical difficulties in the background here, um, but <laughs> also, but it, but the idea here is to get Kevin on more frequently, more often, and we're going to try to do that the best we can because yes. we know you guys love some Kevin Kraft. Um, so, Kevin, thank you for joining today. Thank you for taking the time to talk about the clubs in your bag this year and talk some fitting insights as well. Um, and we're really excited for this year, and especially now with Augusta right around the corner. Yeah, I'm I'm psyched. I've got uh, I got about a month before actually. What is today? Today the second. Yeah, yeah. today is the I second. I got one month to my first to my first event. I've currently played three rounds this year, so uh, I'm heading over to Ocean City, Maryland this weekend for three days on a believe it or not on a on a, a buddy's golf trip. Now I'm there I'm you the, go. I'm kind of the outsider. Yes. Got, got the invite on this one, but I'm playing 36 a day for three days. And that is effectively my entire spring prep. So it's going to happen in three days and I'm going to play well, a bunch of golf, probably going to come home exhausted, but that's okay. Yeah. When you're back at the USC and you're open this year, you're going to thank yourself, uh, thank the buddies on that trip for making it happen. So that's going to be the practice Absolutely. that you needed. <laughs> I mean, I've, got, I've got big goals. I got big goals for this year. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Awesome. We'll be we'll be tracking with you and we'll check in with you as well um, throughout the year to see how that's all going for you. Obviously, we're we're, we're going to be rooting for you with all those tournaments and the competition. So, uh, Kevin, thank you for joining. Uh, golfers, make sure you subscribe to the channel, uh, give the video a like, download the podcast on your favorite platforms, and we'll see you next time.